Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garn from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd Road. It's Depeche Mode, the podcast. I'm your host, John Justice. Thank you so much for checking out the show once again this week. Got a new sponsor. I'll give you more details later on in the show, but it's Underdog Fantasy. You can download their easy-to-use app or go to underdogfantasy.com. Use my promo code TCNT. That's for my weekly radio show. This is a fantastic way to play fantasy sports. And if you're a novice like me, really easy to get into. So again, I'll give you details coming up later on in this week's episode. One year since the release of Memento Mori. And the start of the tour as well as we come to the end of the tour here in April. I can't believe that time has gone by as quickly as it has. It really doesn't seem like all that long ago when I was uh, finally, well, I shouldn't say finally, when I was privileged to get my hands on an early copy of the album and was able to share that with you, which was just one of the most exciting things that I was able to do on this show. Uh, Again, this time just absolutely flies. And an album that, for me, has had zero burn. I mean, it really is up there with those classic Depeche Mode albums going back to the 80s and 90s uh, for me. I think most people will place it somewhere around Ultra, going back in time from the previous um, albums. You know, I I put it up there next to uh, Songs of Faith and Devotion. It is certainly different Depeche Mode than what we had during the Alan Wilder era, but all things considered, and going back to my original commentary around the album, it all still rings, rings true. Given everything that this band has gone through, um, the tragedy, uh, the turmoil, the fact that they were able to make a record like Memento Mori, um, and almost a tribute to what the band had, had done previously, it's truly, truly an, a, an astonishing accomplishment in my opinion. And it's just been a fantastic you know, year after a difficult time for me personally going through this Memento Mori era, and um, I'm not looking forward to the end of this era, but I am looking forward to moving on, and hopefully uh, new exciting things. We'll still have the live release, a potential box set, still waiting for those four unreleased tracks. Maybe we'll get them next month, as had been rumored and what I had at least been told. So at the moment, there's no new news to share, but I did get quite a few emails this week and listener feedback, so let's dive into that. All right, first up, we go to Elise DeLong, who says, I would love for them to produce a new box set of 12 inches with a digital download of their most of of most of their great songs not produced, updated, remastered on any other album sets. Add remixes as done on the Songs of Faith and Devotion 12-inch box set, which has at least 16 different songs with having multiple remixes. I know for me personally, I wish that we could get the complete um, remasters. Uh, we got up until what? Playing the Angel? No, it stopped before that, didn't it? The box set remasters. Yeah, it did stop. It was Ultra, I think, was the last one that we got. I really wish that they would complete that set with the rest of the releases and have the supplemental DVDs and the documentaries. And, of course, I've mentioned many times wanting to get documentaries on the making of um, Delta Machine a spirit, and certainly of Memento Mori. Uh, Danielle Manette writes, In a few days, as I was talking about, it will be the first anniversary of Memento Mori's release, and what a year it's been for me and fans around the world. That album, as you know, reopened the floodgate to everything DM in my life, which represents two concerts, countless hours of catching up and enjoying their catalog, new friendships with other fans, and more. I feel like I've been reborn. I decided to mark the occasion by getting a DM tattoo. This is the tattoo that I wanted to get when I was 15, but never did. 
my mother didn't approve and you can't get a tattoo without parental consent in Canada when you're underage. When I finally got one in my 20s, I got something else that I thought I was over them. So here I am, 38 years later, finally expressing my fandom with some ink in the form of a vintage DM logo. Yeah, it's pretty sweet, which also happens to be my own initials. Bonus points if you can guess on which single release this logo was featured. I want to say Black Ce- was it Black Celebration. I want to say Black Celebration. Might have been a question of lust, now that I'm thinking about it. All right. I'm not phoning a friend. I'm going to say question of lust. Thank you again for the great podcast. It's been a huge part of my journey back to DM and the world we live in and life in general. Cheers, Danielle Manette. Um, thank you, Danielle, as always. Um, I think I'm right on that. We'll see. You let me know. I'm sure you will. I want to mention, too, and I forgot. I finally (laughs) got my home studio set up so I can do interviews again. So um, I'm planning on it. Was actually thinking about doing it this week. I talked with uh, Rob Rome from the Global Depeche Fan Group and uh, mentioned to him that, hey, I finally got this set up to do the interviews from home again, working on a very special interview that I thought was going to come through this week, but it hasn't panned out yet. Um, I don't want to give anything away, so hopefully that still works out. But um, I am set up for interviews. The only reason why I didn't schedule one for this week is because, if you didn't notice, I'm doing the podcast early. Uh, I got a busy week the rest of the week. I have some uh, work meetings that I have to tend to, and uh, I'm not going to have time uh, when I typically do on Thursdays or Fridays to get to it, which is why you're getting the podcast a day early. All right. A uh, friend of the show, David, writes in, For my daily dose of DM, there is no substitute for the following playlist. I sometimes wish I was dead, especially after paying $40 in 1987 for a vinyl import UK pressing, just so I can hear this dumb song. What's your name? Because taking the piss from Adam Ant is nothing but a good time. Further excerpts from My Secret Garden. Note, not excerpts from My Secret Garden. It's further excerpts or Give Me Silence. Are people people? Are spiders hairy? Mix. Flexible, the pre-pre-deportation acoustic dub mix that Brat doesn't want you to have. And finally... People are strange, comma, love. The dorms, the doors DM mashup I made in audio school back in 1984 that I never got back from the instructor, but probably went on to be a massive hit in Hungarian fetish clubs. Note, this is either my real list or we are approaching April 1st. Keep it strange, David. David, I thought that was rather fun. I got quite the kick out of that. My... Nerd world. <laughs> All right, let's go and hear from uh, Leah, who writes this. You mentioned on your March 14th podcast the girl who got pulled up on stage with Dave. I follow her on Instagram, and she and she posted her big moment. I believe it was the March 7th concert in Munich. It's a great video if you want to check it out. I did. It's pretty awesome. We all dream of such a day, and her dream definitely came true that day. Have a great day, Leah. Thank you, Leah. Um, Jean writes in, Amy's reflections on memorable parts of some songs on this week's episode of your podcast brings me back to a particular frustration of this tour. Aside from the rigid and best of playlist, I was eagerly awaiting their repri- their reprise of the sun on the rainfall and dave specifically mentioned this song for paris match in 2022 as fitting the memento mori vibe dave any quotes with every tour with every new tour i dive into our discography to see what can be unearthed the new songs have fit in well with the old ones there are songs like The Sun and the Rainfall that we haven't played since the 80s that we could give a chance this time. It seems that nothing is going to happen with that. That's sad, but who knows? Maybe it will stay in Dave's head and he will bring on stage in a guitar version. Uh, check out the cover of Firestarter. It works perfectly. Um, you know, I wonder... Again, sort of, if I had the opportunity to ask these questions, I wonder if it's simply a matter of the production being needing to be a certain length 
for their locations that they are going to be performing. Now, I suppose you could back up the start times, right? But they have a very, as as Jean mentioned, um, they have a very rigid playlist and a, sort of that solid, you know, twenty two some some you know twenty two somewhat you know kind of re- revolves around that number of songs. I just wonder if it comes down to there's simply other tracks that they want to play and they just can't fit it in to that time frame. You know, I. I don't know. I, I feel like there's some ancillary reason why they can't go and dig deeper and play just a few more special tracks. Or if it's just like kicking open the door. Well, it's like if we're going to do the Sun on the Rainfall, what are we going to get rid of or what what else can we add in? I just I would love to I would love to pick their brain over, you know, why they're not able to um to expand the playlist f- further. Why can't they do a 40 song you know, concert like Taylor Swift. Well, I know why they're older, but you get what I'm saying. All right, uh, let's get to uh, Jason, who writes this. I really did think that it would be the Cologne shows that would be filmed, maximizing the number of Memento Mori songs for the release, with the three nights giving the band plenty of opportunity to capture three songs before Martin's solo slot, that is, Speak to Me, My Favorite Stranger, and Before We Drown, the various songs Martin sings in his solo slot, including Soul With Me, plus some of the other songs they swap out, including World In My Eyes. Now, here is... An interesting nugget that I forgot to share at the start of the show. It is my understanding that while I talked about on last week's show the potential of the Madrid shows being for the live release, I'm not so convinced. Somebody had mentioned to me that there were news crews that were at both of those shows, and it could have very well been, have been, that local media in town was there filming, and they had to post those posters anytime there is going to be ancillary filming that's not directly related to the stage. Because I seem to recall also hearing from somebody or at least reading a post that not only did they not change up the set list all that much, they didn't bring back World in My Eyes, which both myself and others, including my buddy Matt, also thought was awfully strange that they were filming for the live release. Um... But also, there didn't seem to appear to be any extra cameras. And again, I go back to those Mexico shows. That, to me, still makes the most sense. So we'll see. All right. Um, Getting back to Jason's email. Perhaps that may still be the case. After watching the footage from the... From the Oh, here we go. After watching the footage from the Madrid shows, there was a noticeable absence of Anton and Cruz skulking on or on the side of the stage of filming. This is where I got it from. Oh, sorry. Um, and no world in my eyes or John the Revelator the second night either. Perhaps the notice was about filming was due to an EFE filming for a news report. But if any release is missing world in my eyes, it really will be the worst crime. I get it. So this is where it came from. So I knew I heard it from somewhere. I just didn't read far enough into the uh, listener feedback to realize. With the Blu-ray DVD package for the tour of the Universe Live set, I thought the boys had hit the on, on a winning formula. With the inclusion of the live songs from the other night added as bonus tracks, along with the multitude of other great extras. It's a pity they never carried on this formula with the subsequent Blu-ray DVD releases on the other tours. I completely agree. And let's not even mention Anton's refusal to release the Delta Machine the Delta Machine show on Blu-ray. Yeah, that tour, like Tour of the Universe, is one of the best produced and looking one uh, looking tours that was shot it's one of the ones that i watched the least because dave is so nasally in his vocals in that tour especially at the start of the show it's really odd to me wrong sounds off um in chain sound it's just he's very very nasally Jason goes on to say, fingers crossed for a bumper package similar to touring the universe blu-ray dvd release for memento mori And I do have a theory about the filming of the Mexico show. I sense it is destined for a streaming service later in the year around the Day of the Dead. Apple TV Plus, maybe. I know that I was going through my Paramount Plus app recently. And 101 showed up, and I believe it was with Showtime. 
it was available on there, which I thought was odd. Picking up on Jan's fan feedback, imagine having a pain that I'm used to as your morning alarm. That song must be the loudest bone-rattling open track to any album ever. Regards, Jason. (laughs) Thank you, uh, Jason, for that. I greatly um, appreciate it. So again, um, it's a super short uh, episode this week. Like I mentioned, I've got a busy week ahead of me. Um, almost wasn't going to do a podcast, but decided, you know what? I've got some time today. I just got done uh, recording my Star Wars podcast uh, with the release of the Acolyte trailer. Uh, and uh, talked a little bit about the new Alien movie. The teaser for that just dropped. So if you're interested, if you like Star Wars and you happen to enjoy my musings about Depeche Mode, go check out my Star Wars podcast. Just search for My Nerd World Star Wars. You'll find it on wherever you found this particular podcast. A couple of things before I cut you loose. As I mentioned at the start of the show, uh, I I have a new endorsement sponsor on my weekly radio show that I wanted to share with you. Because if you're into fantasy sports, this really is cool. So check this out. And you could be doing me a huge favor. Um, Underdog Fantasy, uh, it's a fan favorite way to play fantasy sports. So the NCAA tournament uh, here in America has uh, is starting this week. The college basketball pick em, it's one of the easiest ways to get in on the action. So if you're making a bracket like so many people do for the NCAA tournament this week, here's another way to keep playing even when your bracket gets busted. And again, I'm a novice to, to all of this. I follow NASCAR almost exclusively, along with uh, F1 and a bit of uh, a bit of Indy. But I play the pick em game on the Underdog Fantasy app with my NASCAR races. And trust me, um, I started a few weeks ago. It's been totally worth it. So if you're playing for the NBA or the NCAA, you pick two to five players and you build your pick them entry. All you have to do is select higher or lower on all different kinds of stats in the NCAA tournament or if you're watching NBA or any other sport for that matter. They give you options based off of whatever sport you're playing. You can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. And there's endless projections to to choose from. To create your own experience. So when I play for NASCAR, it's really simple. Um, I select higher or lower based off the racers finishing average at that weekend's track. So this weekend they're going to Circuit of America, uh, uh, the um, the Circuit of the Americas. So um, I'll go in. I'll see what the average finish is for the drivers lined up for the race this weekend, and I'll just basically basically select higher or lower based off of what their average finishing. Um, what their finishing average is. And it's added some uh, entertainment value to something that I already love. I follow one driver, Alex Bowman, but this has actually made it exciting because now I'm following multiple drivers through a race. So download the easy-to-use app in your app store or go to underdogfantasy.com, but make sure you use the promo code TCNT. This is where you can help me out. Use the promo code TCNT. That's for my full-time uh, radio show. Underdog's going to match your first deposit up to one hundred dollars so you can deposit as little as 10 you'll get a match on that but they'll do that up to 100 dollars, and they're also going to give you a mystery special pick to use on your first pick of entry so again underdog fantasy promo code tcnt and even if you don't play you could be doing me a huge favor by just simply downloading the app and signing up it's completely free you're not going to get inundated with a whole bunch of you know nonsense spam you just sign up but use the promo code tcnt and again They'll match your first deposit with that of $10 or more. Plus, you get a special pick, too. you got to be 18 or over to play. Present in a state in America where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms do apply. And if you're concerned with your play, call 800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. And lastly, of course, before I let you go, if you do happen to enjoy science fiction, as I mentioned, check out my science fiction space opera series, Embark. Seven books in all in the series. You follow a ragtag squadron of pilots and one reluctant hero on a journey of survival as they fight for their future far from Earth. Uh, the, um, the, the main character, the protagonist, is a massive Depeche Mode fan at a time in the future, 2172, when music of the 80s through the 2000s is nostalgic and popular among the characters of the story. I was really inspired by Ready Player One when I wrote it. And it features a lot of uh, Depeche Mode references, both direct and indirect, and a lot of music from that era that I grew up listening to. So if you um, love Depeche Mode, obviously, and read science fiction, treat yourself a friend or a family member with sci-fi, and check out my... uh, 
science fiction space opera series. You can go to Amazon.com or to MyNerdWorld.net. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for checking out the episode this week. I know it's a short one. There's not a lot going on. I'm a busy man. But I really do appreciate you checking out the show. And drop me an email. I love hearing from you. TalkshowNerd at gmail.com. TalkshowNerd at gmail.com. And I'm excited to get some interviews up in here. We'll be doing that very soon. All right. I hope wherever you are, you're happy, you're healthy, and you're safe. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye. Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Dahl from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd World.